There's your oh. differential. What's up guys? Welcome to a brand new After Hours series featuring the worst of the worst cars that come through the shop. The absolute destruction we see on a daily basis still blows our minds and we thought it'd be really fun to share with you guys. You know we had to start off right with a C6 Corvette and if you're looking at it and thinking that doesn't look so bad, <laughs> well... So if you've seen us bring cars into the shop before, load them on one of our carts and put them on the lift, they usually sit pretty flat. This one, oh my God. If you've ever put a car on a lift, it's definitely not supposed to do that. When I said worst of the worst earlier, I meant it. Oh man, we're gonna have to eyeball it. I don't really care to go get like a straight edge. 75 even, I'm gonna call that. We gotta see if even one side is right on this. And well, so no, this thing is definitely back. Okay. It's a whole lot oh my, is that inner lip? That's inner lip. Are you kidding me? 87 and a half. Oh my goodness. 10 inch wheelbase difference. Oh my goodness. That's You're obviously ready to tackle some broken fiberglass. It's fiberglass, man, I'm not messing around. Seems excessive though. <laughs> This is the straight back portion. Yes, that's supposed to this be about right is, here. Yeah, it's supposed to be out here. I'm seeing some things I don't like <laughs> through that hole in the bumper. I uh, I guess we'll get to that later, but that's not looking very promising because that's not the only thing that's about two feet forward. Wow. We're not off to a good start today. Of all the things we would be missing on a project like this, we were missing Sawzall blades. We buy these in what, packs of 100, and we're never out of these things. Of course, of course, today would be the day on the car that we desperately needed on. Anyway, back to work. Don't even know where. I, to, I was thinking the same thing. I had the saws on my hand. I'm like, I don't know where to start on here because. I think I'm just gonna cut this. All right. Now, as bad as this rear end looks, we were getting ready to rip the bumper off it and just, you know, Neanderthal fashion. And uh, unfortunately, I guess, unfortunately, this fender's good, so we actually have to unbolt it. When these cars get hit like this, the bell housing almost always cracked, the torque tube gets all bent up and the engine won't start. It'll sometimes act like it's seized up because of it. Um, so we have to remove all this stuff, hopefully it starts. All right, now we can rip this thing off of here. And I was hoping to rip this off in just dramatic fashion and um, didn't really work out that way, so. I'm gonna get tough with it. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't make me look terrible. Oh, that's, it. that's strong. <laughs> That's on there way better than... I'm, I'm in some trouble here. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Whoa, watch the FD, man. Jeez. Oh, that, that's almost as bad as this car. Not a good part? No, this isn't a good part. It's definitely cracked, but... Oh, just a souvenir? The first person that DMs us on Scrap Life Garage Instagram with the address gets this sent to him. I don't know why anybody would want it, but if you want it, we'll send it to you. Oh. We might need to rethink this. Now, a logical person here would just unbolt some control arms, unbolt the struts, wait for it to come down, and then pull the wheel. That's not what this video is about. For anyone that doesn't know what he's doing, he is hammering the wheel studs out of the actual hub in order to make it easier for the wheel to drop down. Let's move them more. Yeah, that accomplished something. So it is standard procedure here at Lisey Parts to test every wheel. We don't want to sell people bad wheels, so we throw them on the balancer. I have never seen a wheel 
ask for oh, eight point wow. seven five, and then not even give a reading on the other side. I feel like that record is only going to be set on this series. That's just how it's got to be, right? Keep pushing the limits. Yeah. What is? The, I wonder what the max for this machine is because I bet we're going to find it. And if you look at it from like this side over here, it actually looks like a normal car. Total like, normal vet. This is what it's supposed to look like. I mean, ignore that up there. We'll block that out. Oh, except for this. And and this. Look at that leaf spring. So just so you guys are aware, that's supposed to be straight across, not at a you know 40 degree angle. And um, this also not supposed to be like that. I love how the tub just moves like it's closed. I get that you're trying to look cool like me with the bumper, but it's it's not really working out for get you. Get my ass kicked. Yeah. Uh, I uh, I think this one calls for going straight to the dumpster. We could definitely pitch this as a really unique form of CrossFit. I mean, we do have CrossFit people right down the street. Yeah, you think right. we should... Tell me you're not, you know, working a little bit. I'm working a lot of it. $59.99 a month. Come here, do this for like an hour a night. You'll be jacked. People are going to pay us for labor? Yeah, it's a CrossFit. That's how it works. The famous dinner tray, that's supposed to be flat and, well... Serious business, glasses back on. Was back on. People are always getting on us in these videos about, you know, safety. Standing on other forklifts and whatnot. And you just proved it's safety first here. Yeah. Wow. It's, Ray Bands. How do they survive? Ah, uh, the safety squints. <laughs> while I have safety glasses yeah, on my safety head. Safety glasses on your head while squinting to prevent glass from flying into your eyes. There's the frame rail. I mean, I really hope this comes across on camera as pleasing as it is to watch in person. Wow. Holy crap. Look at the profile from over here. This frame rail is relatively where it should be. Relatively. Look at yeah. how, not even this, look at how it's moved this way. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's significantly up. This is a contender for worst vet we've had for sure. So it does look like we have one good muffler here. Potentially, the hangers might be bent, you know, whatever. We'll figure that out later. That's where the good ends. That's where the exhaust is supposed to go through. Yeah. So the subframe replaced the exhaust. The exhaust replaced the trunk floor and the trunk floor is over there. Two things I've gathered from this so far. I never cease to be impressed by the way energy transfers like this and the way things just get mangled in these wrecks. Two, this does not bode well for our financials on this car. This isn't one of those videos. If you're into that, go head over to the Salvage Stories playlist after this video. But I think we might have some drivetrain issues back here. Even if nothing's cracked, broken, I mean, this is rough. We may get lucky with the trans. Maybe. maybe. Yeah, may, maybe. Hard maybe. Oh my goodness. But it just shifted to the right, like, I don't know, a half inch. Easy. Wow. All right. Well, let's I mean, go. look how uneven that is. That's crazy. Oh, that didn't take very long. Sorry, SLP. Hey guys, you're gonna have to fill me in on this. Why did this dude put Dynamat on the frame rails? I can't imagine it does anything. So if you're hip to why that happened, definitely let me know because I'm genuinely curious. That's supposed to be straight. Yes, that we sell those cuts. These are it, 90 degrees, and this is straight. Yeah, it's impressive. I, I, there's no other word for it. This is just impressive. So one thing that we like to do whenever we get cars in, we like to do kind of like accident recreation, try and figure out what happened. And the only thing that we've got to on this thing so far is that it got hit by probably a dump truck <laughs> sitting on the side of the road with no one in it. There's no airbags blown. It doesn't appear that somebody was driving yeah, the when the steering this wheel's hit. not bent. Yeah. Exactly. So you have some scenario that you think is plausible, let us know. Look at the height of that frame rail there. And then look at that one. I mean, 
surprisingly solid on the list somehow. Like, don't ask me how, but you know, it is. It's not too hard to believe how this fiberglass tub got messed up. But when you start getting up here, I mean, this is metal. This is metal that is significantly bent forward. One thing I noticed here from the top, and I think that's about all we're going to be able to see until we get under it, but look at the frame rail. It's like, it's an accordion. That's the best way to put it. And this is not a Z06 frame rail. This is a steel one from a base car. I'd honestly hate to see what this would have done to a Z06. It's, it would have not been good. We never had one that has got to there. Yeah, that's very true. If we, you get hit in the back, the passenger cabin is completely fine usually. Yep. I've never seen one that actually moved. I mean, you can see how far forward the passenger seat is compared yep. to the driver's seat. While I was filming that little bit, I uh, saw something I really didn't want to see. So I guess we'll just break the news now. There's oh, your differential. Oh my goodness. I don't know what to say. That's just rough, man. That is rough. But I think we still have hope on the trans. This is a chunk out of the diff and the trans still looks okay. I just realized something else that we overlooked. That is the axle all the way up there. So I did see that. And the mounting ear for the diff is in front of it. It oh, yeah. sheared the axle. I have never seen that happen. So yeah, that's... That is, that surrounding piece is the actual part yeah. of the axle. You're not lying, I didn't even notice that. Enough playing around, let's get it in the air and see just how bad it is. Not that we haven't already established that, but you know what I mean. Ooh. Oh my God. The subframe first. I mean, I guess we'll start there. It's in like 10 pieces. Once again, that subframe is supposed to be straight across and once again, it is not. The Get bottom of the gas tank. This is supposed to be flat. Yes. This is supposed to be flat. Yes, it's supposed to look like this over here, which is flat. That one is, I don't know, almost straight up. That is freaking nuts. I can't get a great angle on it because of the lift arm, but yeah, that's that's the gas tank too. All this plastic here, gas tank. I just swept. Fortunately, I think once you take the mount off here, you're not gonna have to worry about it coming down on you. I, I don't see it coming out. Now there is some good news here. When we have gas tanks that are stuck in cars, if they're not punctured, we have to drill a hole in it before we take it to the scrapyard. They don't want fuel in the tanks for obvious reasons. Dude. This On this car, it punctured it for us. Oh my God, the floor. It but, broke the bolts out of the tunnel. They, they're uh, supposed to be bolts there. Yeah, never in my life have I seen that. That's insane. Until I saw what you just put that on, I'm like, what could you possibly need WD-44 on this car? What do we actually need to take apart? What has this car not taken apart itself? But I guess that makes sense. Why are you taking that off? Is it not? No, <laughs> you right. Uh, it's the same thing, you don't need to take that off. No? Oh wait, that one is on. That oh, one is on, okay, yeah. yeah. I'm looking up like where I expect things to be and they're not there. I'm like, oh, where's... Yeah. All right, so the upper mounts are still intact. So this is probably going to shift, but it's not going to actually come down. The gas tank's in the way. You know, guys, in theory, cutting a gas tank with a Sawzall probably isn't the best idea. We have access to the boat. Yeah, if you ever wonder what the inside of a Corvette gas tank looks like, there you go. That's really weird that that yeah, didn't move. Yeah, that should have moved. That's really weird it didn't move. That one is okay. moving, okay. What is it? So yeah, I have a good suspicion that once these strut bolts are off, things are gonna start falling and slipping just as we want them to. was not expecting that. So I said, you Holy know, shit. things are gonna move and slide, but first off, you all right? I'm fine. Like, I, I, I don't think it would have hit me anyway when I was knelt down. Now, I thought your hand might have been in there. No, oh no, my God. I had everything on top of it. So when I said moving and sliding, I did not mean that. That was something. So now part of that though, I think that spring, the spring is completely spring, yeah, yeah, 100%. Because that, I wasn't expecting that reaction out of it, yeah. but even though we unbolted it, I think because it's so wedged, oh I didn't, I didn't think about that. Oh Still, my Still though, that's God. pretty wild for it to react. So we're gonna use a much more cautious approach on this one. It can't possibly be as bad. It's gonna fall, but not like that. I don't think the bolt so. can back out far enough. Is it wedged up there too much? Yeah, I don't think that the bolt's gonna come out. Like 
12 seconds. Yeah, it's... I'm going to hit this top bolt first, but I think this is wedged. We're either going to have to pry it out or cut it also. Watch toes, though. Just in case. Back up just slightly. The outer CV, or the inner CV, was completely... <laughs> well, that, that, was, that was weak. Jumping. Weak. <laughs> How's that even still hold? Oh, oh, it's, yeah, just give it a light tap back there, and she's going to come down. You almost got got by that one. No, that, no, I, that, totally, I saw that swing past the ship. I was ship. like lightning. I swung yeah. it out that way. You know something I noticed about this that I find kind of weird? How many vets do we get in here with broken upper control arms? Upper control yeah, arms? A pretty, ton pretty of them. decent amount. How did that not break? How did we end up having to cut that? That's a good point. You know, one cool mod they did to this car was the easy inspection differential cover. I kind of love it. That's not how you're supposed to look at it, technically, but, you know, it looks like it broke the O-ring there, too, which is a shame. There may be usable parts in there for somebody, but I don't think we're going to find out. So, honestly, it does have a 342 ring gear. It's a manual, so maybe we might end up taking something from this. Three hours deep in CrossFit now. There we go. All right. Oh, wow. Not that that's, like, a huge feat, but... They completely split the leaf. They are composite. Broken my both ends. They are composite. Yeah, yeah, look at that. That's actually really cool looking. What do you think, doll? This doesn't, you know, deserve to be saved, right? This doesn't go in the wall of shame. There, there's worse. Yeah, it's too big. I mean, that, that, we can get that out of a normal wreck. I'm going to do something real quick that I wasn't planning on doing here, but we do have a wall of shame for the coolest of the cool stuff. I'm going to show you one of my favorite pieces. So this is a part from a previous car that we couldn't help but save. This is a carbon fiber wheel from a GT350R. Unfortunately with these, there's no repairing them. Once they're split, they're done. They're trash. It's not completely busted up, but it's still delaminating there. And just to see that coming from a wheel is really cool to me. Last but not least, the coolest wall of shame piece we have around here, this red RX-7. <laughs> that's, that's really, you know I'm standing right here, man. Hold up, do we, uh, do we do this the fun way or the smart way? Eh, whatever. The fun way. Oh, oh. Really? Well done. So I just ran into the office to order us dinner and I hear stuff going on out here. I come out and this is what Dalt has chose to do with his time. I was like a true professional. It is not easy to get tires off something like that. Wow. Dude. I was good. Hold on, hold on, go outside and do it. A hundred dollars out of my pocket if you can hit that tree. It's going towards a different tree, but it, I don't think it has right, the muscle. Now that I know the trajectory, I may be able to do it. Cool or really stupid. I think I know which way it's gonna go. Yeah, me too. I mean, it, it was it was closer than mine. Like I can't really argue. You know what I mean? That's Olympic form right there. Oh, shit. With not an Olympic result. Hey, it's standing up though. Anyway, back to business. So this is definitely not the way we generally get to work on these, but it sure is convenient. Right. Okay. Wow. I can't, I can't get it. Yeah, can't. Look at, look at oh, that. Just, I literally just gone. ruined my gloves. <laughs> In an odd twist of normal dismantling procedure, we actually have to drain the fluid on the transmission. That's nice and clean. It looks like relatively new red line. Uh, so the, these use ATF, so oh, it is ATF, all okay. red, yeah. Little bit of damage to the casing, little chip off of that. <laughs> it fared amazingly well. 
So I'm going to be absolutely shocked if this trans, you know, doesn't show any signs of damage whatsoever. It's going to be, I mean, other than the chip you just pointed out, I'm really not seeing much. We are the Mid-Atlantic's number one specialty automotive dismantler. Where'd you read that line? Now all these sensors, and we just pop this thing off and see if the car falls forward off the lift. All joking aside, you guys get on us about all the different safety stuff. We have checked it multiple times to make sure it is still supported. My Corvette's been in the parking lot for quite a bit, but I think I recall these being 13. See if I'm right. Yes. <laughs> as hard as it is to not grab a slice of you know, that hot Domino's over there, today's video sponsor, Domino's. Um, I was going to say the same exact thing. We're, we're going to go ahead and get this trans out before we touch that. Before we get this trans off, we have to get the shifter rod off. That means we have to get inside the car. Now, we can do that through the open driver's door, or we can go over here and be creative about the whole ordeal and get into it through the passenger door. We do have so, a giant pry bar. Okay, I mean... That is at our disposal. I'm, uh, I'm not positive it's going to come off with a, pry, with a pry bar. I think we might need to sawzall it, but let's see what it does. Uh -uh. Ooh. I think that's the outer skin. Are you, just, are you just peeling the door? Yeah, I think that's the outer skin. Oh. All right, you got half of it off. We're getting, we're getting somewhere. Ooh. Damn it. Well, all of 10 seconds. And 15 to be to be generous. I, I could have got it. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I could have. So if you've ever wondered what like a two-piece Corvette door looks like, this is it. Now I do have to say, we see this pretty often. We see separated skins on these. That's not too uncommon. What is uncommon is for it to be completely obliterated like this. Do you think you can even get the target out? We're gonna find out, aren't we? There's a quarter of a quarter. Let's see what I did there. I, I did, too bad it's only about a third. Looks good. Like the posts aren't bent. Everything Don't else? ask me how. Everything else just moved around it? Yeah, I, I truly think so. Like the latch worked as it should. I don't know. I think we might have lucked out on this one, which I definitely did not expect. I thought something was going to be broke on it. And honestly, we see these broke on non wrecked cars. Like the latches are broke, they're cracked, something. Definite shocker, but I will take it. The salvage story on this stance C6 that Carrington just did had a broken target top on it. Just the, the small amount of parts that this car has actually produced. I think you can count them on, oh, now more than one hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> National Corvette Museum. I, I don't think they're gonna want this one. But. Yeah, looks like one of the ones that fell in the ditch. You know, they may have wanted it before because one thing I have not touched about in this video yet is the fact that this car has like 22,000 miles. It's something low. Don't quote me exactly. We'll check when we get it powered up. So this is supposed to be a Torx. It's a Phillips. Somebody's had it off, replaced it before. And of course, it's not just a Phillips. It's a stripped Phillips. Got that finesse. I don't think anything about that was finesse, <laughs> but okay. So this thing won't even close right. It's so bent. That's crazy. Oh my God. Uh -oh. You might as well just get in here now and check that out. Can this kid come out of the way? Oh yeah, hold that. Oh my goodness. That is insane. I have never seen damage like that on no, one of these cars. Definitely not. That's... That is nuts. I mean, normally you can access that, right? Yeah. Is it moved that far forward? Mm. Another usable part. Yep. I think they're getting bored of usable parts. Let's get this trans off. Uh, isn't, does that shift the rod have to come out? It comes, it comes straight. <laughs> Professional transmission removal. All right, now I guess the last piece of the puzzle here until we can start this thing is the torque tube. In other news, the back of the car is no longer on the lift on the passenger side. So, so if I do get cracked in the head with the torque tube, just do me a favor, hit the like button. Could you pick that up? Like, I mean, you heard it. I don't know how much it actually like saw, but it was tensioned. It literally just boom, boom. So this is just a, another great illustration. This 
it's supposed to be the same level as this. Yeah. There's also the fact that when you unbolt this, it's supposed to come out. Yeah, so. and just fall right down. <laughs> oh, I'll have to bolt in. Whoops. You you didn't take any of the bolts out, right? No. Uh huh. Okay. Well, this isn't gonna be a hard okay. removal. I'll tell you that. That one doesn't even have a bolt. Okay. I can't really tell if that one up there does, but that little thing right there <laughs> would explain why none of the bolts are tight. There is one bolt holding this torque tube in right now. Out of five? Yes, out of five. Out of five. For those that aren't good at percentages, that is not a passing score. 15%. <laughs> it's beginning to be one of those. There we go. One of the many bell housing pieces. Yeah. Let's see it, MJ. Oh. oh, it's working. Yeah, absolutely it is. Now, it's not the factory service manual way, but it's a way. Oh, wow. Never seen this one before. No, no, no. Ooh, wow. Wow. How does that even Sheared happen? Both bolts that hold on the slave cylinder. You go ahead and spit. Oh my god, you you can't even spit. I mean, literally, look at it. Just stand it back up. That's supposed to be straight. Is it broke all the way around? Keep rolling it. Not all the way. It's like solid 180, maybe more degrees though. The nice thing is that generally all that damage stops with that torque tube. The torque tube bends up. You can see the clutch disc itself. The actual splines have virtually no damage. The pilot bearing in there really doesn't show any damage. So now it is the time that we can see if maybe this thing starts. Before I touch anything, prediction, Dalt? Oh, I think she runs. I'm gonna go with I... it runs too, but I think it gives us a little trouble. Pause it. Put it in the comments. This thing gonna start up. Is it gonna catch on fire? Uh, what's gonna happen here? All right, guys. I think we might end on a slightly sour note. Unfortunately, uh, there's a lot of wiring damage, as you guys know, in the back, and we're getting a bunch of communication errors. Um, it doesn't want to start. It kind of just kills everything. We have multiple jump boxes on there, so I think there just might be too much damage to start this thing without going crazy with it. But that's the error we're getting on the scanner. It has a bunch of lights up there. It is not happy. Another note, I, I'm not positive even if it was going to crank, uh, it would start because it is completely empty of fuel. I've honestly never seen one this empty, but if you look at that gauge, it's significantly below zero and uh, it just passed, but there is an actual low fuel warning as well. So It's possible that other tank is punctured and we just didn't see it I, when we I were under there. Not quite the ending we wanted, but still I am mind blown at the damage we found on this car. Any, uh, any final words, Dalton? I want to say that I almost hope we don't see a Corvette this damaged again. Uh, I think we will. But I want to see another Corvette that's just as damaged again and do it all over. If you guys enjoyed this, definitely let us know. We'll keep making more. As is the case with any new series, we're only going to keep it going if it's what you guys want to see. If there were things you didn't like about this video or this series, definitely tell us as well. We have a ton of cool stuff coming up on the channel, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of it. And I will see you guys next time. You all right over there, bud? This light is really weird, man. Like you're, yeah. you literally look like you're fucking albino. Spool and no, diesel. No, it was uh, whistle and diesel. Yeah. Spool. Was spool that a and, joke? Spool and diesel. Spool and diesel. That's his that name, name, right? Oh, whistle and diesel. Whistle and diesel. Yeah. As, as is the case. If you guys enjoyed this, let us know. The, if you guys, enjoyed, <laughs> <laughs> you let me look like an idiot. My friggin' headband and like falling back on my head. <laughs> like, How long have I looked stupid? <laughs> what do you think the humidity is in here? Three hundred percent. Three hundred is probably a good estimate against that side right there this side look at where it's touching the torque tube there look at how low that is god you turned around before i was out of bolts messing up your shot but took you a little bit <laughs>